Let's just go ahead and put this on the table. Donald Trump is a hideous leader. He's a narcissist who treats women like worthless sex objects, scoffs at human rights and refuses to listen to anybody about anything. He doesn't understand foreign trade, has unwittingly turned centuries-old allies into fickle frenemies and would rather bend over for the NRA than take minuscule steps to protect children from being shot to death at school. The polls don't lie. Most Americans are sick and tired of Donald Trump and his witless cronies, and they want him kicked to the curb before he can further tarnish the American tradition. There's so much anger in the air you could cut it with a knife, and that's why any act of defiance, no matter how small, generates disproportionate heaps of praise. Take last night's Tony Awards, for example. Acting legend Robert De Niro strolled on stage at New York's Radio Music Hall, ditched the teleprompter and veered about 30 yards off topic to let the cameras know precisely what was on his mind. Fuck Trump. There wasn't much more to it than that, to be honest, but De Niro won himself a bigger and more AUKUS standing ovation than when he snagged his Best Actor Oscar for Raging Bull. The audience loved it, the internet loved it, and even the presenters who followed broke from their tightly lipped scripts to give De Niro a tip of the hat for his balls and passion. It was probably ratings gold. But you know what? As much as I absolutely adore hearing Hollywood royalty unload some rich expletives on the White House, and I do, De Niro's hilarious outburst was actually a little bit depressing, because at the end of the day, it's merely symptomatic of the rot infestation that's been crippling liberal America for years. You see, thus far Democrats haven't really bothered with a concerted strategy to defeat Donald Trump. After all, the guy's a conservative caricature bordering on downright loony tune, who needs strategy. In any ordinary political climate, all you'd have to do is point out Trump's bankruptcies, tumultuous personal life and unforgivable comments about grabbing women by the pussy to send him back to the shadows from whence he came. But unlike the sleazy politicians of yesteryear, Donald Trump and his support base just don't care. Accusations of sexual assault and racism simply bounce off Trump like cannonballs on a Civil War ironclad. Nothing happens. Yet for whatever reason, liberals just keep on waving this sensational stuff in the air without any trace of context, and then react with shock and malice every time an offensive tweet fails to result in automatic impeachment. US President Donald Trump looking at a cake being brought for him during a working lunch with Singapore's Prime Minister Lee Shien Long during his visit to the Astana, the official residence of the Prime Minister, in Singapore. Kim Jong-un and Donald Trump will meet on June 12 for an unprecedented summit, with the US President calling it a one-time shot at peace. Maharal Mintz presidential candidate of Turkey's main opposition Republican People's Party, CHP, delivers a speech from the roof of a bus during a campaign meeting in Istanbul French President Emmanuel Macron, German Chancellor Angela Merkel and Japan's Prime Minister Shinzo Abe speaking to US President Donald Trump during the second day of the G7 meeting in Charlevoix, Canada. Looking on is U.S. National Security Advisor John R. Bolton. Former South African President Jacob Zuma sings and dances on stage after delivering a speech during a rally in his support outside the High Court, in Durban on June 8, 2018 Russian President Vladimir Putin listens to a question during his annual call-in show in Moscow. 
Putin hosts call-in shows every year, which typically provide a platform for ordinary Russians to appeal to the president on issues ranging from foreign policy to housing and utilities. Protesters wave flags and shout slogans during a demonstration against the use of the term Macedonia in any solution to a dispute between Athens and Skopje over the former Yugoslav Republic's name, in the northern town of Pella, Greece. Police officers salute as the caskets of police women Saraya Belkasimi, 44, and Lucille Garcia, 54, arrive during their funeral in Liege. The two officers, and one bystander were killed in Liege on Tuesday by a gunman. Police later killed the attacker, and other officers were wounded in the shooting. A rescue worker carries a child covered with ash after a volcano erupted violently in El Rodeo, Guatemala. Volcán de Fuego, whose name means Volcano of Fire, spewed an 8 km five-mile stream of red-hot lava and belched a thick plume of black smoke and ash that trained onto the capital and other regions. Dozens were killed across three villages. A recycler drags a huge bag of paper sorted for recycling past a heap of non-recyclable material at Richmond Sanitary Landfill site in the industrial city of Bulawayo. Plastic waste remains a challenging waste management issue due to its non-biodegradable nature, if not managed properly plastic ends up as litter polluting waterways, wetlands and storm drains causing flash flooding around Zimbabwe's cities and towns. Urban and rural areas are fighting the continuous battle against a scourge of plastic litter. On June 5, 2018 the United Nations marked the World Environment Day which plastic pollution is the main theme this year. Palestinian mourners carry the body of 21-year-old medical volunteer Azan al-Najjar during her funeral after she was shot dead by Israeli soldiers near the Gaza border fence on June 1, in another day of protests and violence. She was shot near Khan Yunus in the south of the territory, Health Ministry spokesman Ashraf al said, bringing the toll of Gazans killed by Israeli fire since the end of March to 123. Spain's new Prime Minister Pedro Sánchez poses after a vote on a no-confidence motion at the Spanish Parliament in Madrid. Spain's Parliament ousted Prime Minister Mariano Rajoy in a no-confidence vote sparked by fury over his party's corruption woes, with his socialist arch-rival Pedro Sánchez automatically taking over. Zinedine Zidane looks on after a press conference to announce his resignation as manager from Real Madrid. He confirmed he was leaving the Spanish Giants, just days after winning the Champions League for the third year in a row. A worker cleans up the millionaire migrants' makeshift camp along the Canal de Saint-Denis near Port de la Villette, northern Paris, following its evacuation on May 30. More than a thousand migrants and refugees were evacuated early in the morning from the camp that had been set up for several weeks along the canal. Police and ambulances are seen at the site where a gunman shot dead three people, two of them policemen, before being killed by elite officers, in the eastern Belgian city of Liege. French President Emmanuel Macron meets with Mamoudou Gassama, 22, from Mali, at the presidential Elysee Palace in Paris. Gassama living illegally in France is being honored by Macron for scaling an apartment building over the weekend to save a four-year-old child dangling from a fifth-floor balcony. Migrants wait to disembark from the ship Aquarius in the Sicilian harbor of Catania. Italy Island awaits the official result of a referendum that could end the country's ban on abortion. 
co-director of Together for Yes Alva Smith speaks to the media after exit polls suggested victory for the Yes campaign. Film producer Harvey Weinstein arrives at the first precinct in Manhattan where he turned himself into New York police for sexual misconduct charges. Russian President Vladimir Putin R, meets with his French counterpart Emmanuel Macron at the Constantin Palace in Strolna, outside St. Petersburg, on May 24, 2018 people protest out at the Tamil Nadu house after. At least 10 people were killed when police fired on protesters seeking closure of plant on environmental grounds in town of Thuthakudi in southern state of Tamil Nadu, in New Delhi. People demonstrate in Paris during a nationwide day protest by French public sector employees and public servants against the overhauls proposed by French President Emmanuel Macron, calling them an attack by the centrist leader against civil services as well as their economic security. Newly appointed Catalan President Kim Torra arrives to visit jailed Catalan separatist politicians at the Estremera jail near Madrid. Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro casts his vote during the presidential elections in Caracas. Maduro was seeking a second term in power. Channelized lava emerges on Kilau Aya Volcano's lower reef rift zone on Hawaii. The USGS said on its website that a fast-moving Pahoehoe lava flow that emerged from Fisher 20 continues to flow southeast, with the quickest of three lobes progressing at 230 yards, 210 meters, per hour. Santa Fe High School student Dakota Schrader is comforted by her mother Susan Davidson following a shooting at the school in Texas. Schrader said her friend was shot in the incident. Multiple people have been killed. French President Emmanuel Macron, British Prime Minister Theresa May and German Chancellor Angela Merkel meeting during the EU Western Balkans summit in Sofia, Bulgaria. People hold flags with the state coat of arms of Russia as they drive along a bridge, which was constructed to connect the Russian mainland with the Crimean Peninsula across the Kerch Strait. Palestinians run away from tear gas shot at them by Israeli forces during a protest in Ramallah, in the occupied West Bank a Palestinian demonstrator runs during a protest against the U.S. Embassy move to Jerusalem and ahead of the 70th anniversary of the Nakba at the Israel-Gaza border. A bullet hole on the window of a cafe in Paris, the day after a knifeman killed one man and wounded four other people before being shot dead by police Germany's Chancellor Angela Merkel looks. On after receiving the Lamp of Peace, the Nobel Catholic Award for her work of conciliation for the peaceful cohabitation of peoples at the Basilica Superiore of St. Francis of Assisi in Italy, Police forensics investigate the death of seven people in a suspected murder-suicide in Australia. Four children are among seven people that were found dead at a rural property in Osmington, near Margaret River. Detectives are investigating the incident, which was said to be treated as a murder-suicide, media reported. Two firearms were found at the scene. Western Australia police said. Missiles rise into the sky as Israeli missiles hit air defense position and other military bases, in Damascus, Syria. The Israeli military on Thursday said it attacked dozens of Iranian targets in neighboring Syria in response to an Iranian rocket barrage on Israeli positions in the Golan Heights in the most serious military confrontation between the two bitter enemies to date. Iranian MPs burning a US flag in the parliament in Tehran. 
Iran said it will hold talks with signatories to a nuclear deal after U.S. President Donald Trump's decision to withdraw from the accord, which it branded psychological warfare. President Hassan Rouhani also said Iran could resume uranium enrichment without limit in response to Trump's announcement. Newly elected Prime Minister of Armenia Nikol Pashinyan addresses the crowd in Republic Square in Yerevan. The leader of protests that gripped Armenia for weeks was named the country's new Prime Minister on Tuesday, overcoming the immediate political turmoil but raising uncertainty about the longer term. Russian President Vladimir Putin walks before his president inauguration ceremony at the Kremlin in Moscow. Lava from a robust fissure eruption on Kilau Izi Strift Zone consumes a home, then threatens another, near Pahoa, Hawaii. The total number of homes lost within the Leilani Estates subdivision thus far is 21 and geologists from the Hawaii Volcanoes Observatory do not expect the eruption to cease any time soon. A local state of emergency has been declared after Mount Kilau Isle erupted near residential areas, forcing mandatory evacuation of about 1,700 citizens from their nearby homes. The crater's floor collapsed on the 1st of May and is since then continuing to erode its walls and generating huge explosions of ashes. Several earthquakes have been recorded in the area where the volcanic eruptions continue, including a 6.9 magnitude earthquake which struck the area on the 4th of May. Russian police carrying struggling opposition leader Alexei Navalny at a demonstration against President Vladimir Putin in Moscow. Thousands of demonstrators denouncing Putin's upcoming inauguration into a fourth term gathered in the capital's Pushkin Square. Chinese President Xi Jinping speaks at an event to mark Karl Marx's 200th birthday at the Great Hall of the People in Beijing. President Vladimir Putin meets with FIFA President Gianni Infantino in Sochi, ahead of the 2018 World Cup in Russia. Supporters of opposition lawmaker Nikol Pashinyan protest in Republic Square in Yerevan, Armenia. Pashinyan has urged his supporters to block roads, railway stations and airports after the governing Republican Party voted against his election as Prime Minister. Cubans marched during the May Day rally at Revolution Square in Havana. The sky is the limit, a Saudi man and woman fly over the Arabian Sarawak Mountains in the first ever joint wingsuit flight in traditional dress. A symbolic leap of faith towards women's empowerment in Saudi Arabia. A general view for the damaged railway station in Al Qadam neighborhood, after it was recaptured from Islamic State militants, in the south of Damascus. According to media reports, the Syrian army continued the military offensive it has launched earlier this month against militant groups entrenching in southern Damascus and captured several neighborhoods, including al qadam and Al-Asali and targeting the remnants of armed groups in Al-Hajar Al-Aswad and its surrounding in Damascus southern countryside. Comedian Michelle Wolf attends the celebration after the White House Correspondents' Dinner. Conservatives walked out after Wolf brutally ridiculed President Donald Trump and his aides during her piece. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un and South Korean President Moon Jae-in raised their hands after signing on a joint statement North Korean leader Kim Jong-un, left, and South Korean President Moon Jae-in raised their hands after signing on a joint statement at the border village of Panmunjom in the demilitarized zone, South Korea. The Korean War will be formally declared over after 65 years, the North and South have said. 
a historic summit between leaders Kim Jong-un and Moon Jae-in, the neighboring countries agreed they would work towards peace on the peninsula with a formal end to the conflict set to be announced later this year. The pair agreed to bring the two countries together and establish a peace zone on the contested border. Women hold portraits of their relatives, who are victims of the Chernobyl nuclear disaster, during a commemoration ceremony in Kiev, Ukraine. Rohingya refugees gather in the no-man's land behind Myanmar's border lined with barbed wire fences in Mundor district, Rakhine state bounded by Bangladesh. Myanmar government said on April 15, it repatriated on April 14 the first family of Rohingya out of some 700,000 refugees who have fled a brutal military campaign, a move slammed by a rights group as a PR stunt ignoring UN warnings that a safe return is not yet possible. President Donald Trump, French President Emmanuel Macron, First Lady Melania Trump and Bridget Macron hold hands on the White House balcony during a state arrival ceremony in Washington. A boy walks on a pile of garbage covering a drain in New Delhi. It sucks, because Donald Trump has done dirtier deeds than Richard Nixon could ever hope to achieve in 30 terms as president, but that's just the way the cookie crumbles. The American political system is designed to preserve the status quo. So if the guy won't resign, and Congress hasn't got enough compassion for life on earth to impeach, Donald Trump is going to keep on burying the US Constitution in greasy McDonald's wrappers until he damn well pleases. That's why seeing celebrities take to the stage and toss out solitary and seemingly random FK Trump S is getting a bit old now, to be honest. Yes, we all agree Donald Trump is a complete and utter idiot, but instead of slagging him off and then moving swiftly on to the next Tony Award, let's talk about the world we would create in Trump's stead. Whether we care to admit it, Democrats of the post-Obama era aren't very good at selling themselves. Much like the UK's struggling Labour voices, American liberals are always quick to point out everything conservative incumbents are bad at, without giving us much insight as to how their party could do any better. Yet as we march nervously into November's crucial midterm elections, America's fragmented left has the power to unite and completely castrate Donald Trump by flipping Congress. That's where the road to impeachment, or at the very least silencing the White House, begins. It is possible. But until Democrats and their iconic, A-list patrons give us a positive and proactive message to work with, swing voters are just going to continue dismissing the left as whiny, short-sighted and easily offended elitists. Don't get me wrong, Robert De Niro and everybody he knows should keep on saying FK Trump every chance they get. It's how we all feel. But in order to accomplish something, that sentiment needs to be immediately followed by an explanation of who and what we should be voting for instead, and above all else, why? Until liberals can answer for that why and start to build a cohesive and proactive policy agenda, America's political future is in grave turmoil. <laughs>